Hello there. Welcome to the on demand recording of the phone update at Team Summit session. Before we get started, just a bit about your presenters. Uh, my name is Matt Sims. I'm a customer success manager in the healthcare and life sciences vertical at Microsoft. Um, I, I have spent um, most of my career working in um, Microsoft Enterprise Technologies, working with um, voice over IP and collaboration uh, technologies. And when I'm not at work, I love music. I'm passionate about music. So I've got a picture on this slide of a analog synthesizer. And um, I'm really into uh, synthesizers and guitars and drums and all that stuff. And I am joined by Dwayne Friedlander, who is a, a peer of mine, customer success manager in healthcare. Dwayne, you want to maybe tell a little bit of, tell the nice folks about uh, a bit about your career and and your passions? Certainly. Uh, good morning, everybody. Afternoon, evening. Um, my name is Dwayne Friedlander, as Matt said. I am a peer of his, um, Modern Communications Customer Success Manager. That is a huge mouthful. Uh, basically means that we focus around Teams and Teams telephony. Um, last five years, I have been working right here at Microsoft um, as a PFE DSE CE. Yes, CE, <laughs> I think is the newest term for that role. And I recently transitioned uh, into this role as a Modern Com CSM. I have a passion for cars. As you can see, that is my Mustang on there. Um, if you are really bored and can't sleep and wants to talk about cars, call me and I can probably talk about that all day. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Dwayne. Yes. Sir. So I'm just going to set the agenda a bit and just uh, set the framework for what we're going to be talking about today. So first, we're going to talk through some of the workplace trends that we see um, and and how that relates to um, where Microsoft is making investments with our products in Microsoft 365 and with Teams. Um, then we'll get it. Uh, after we talk through those workplace trends, we're then going to switch gears and talk through high level Microsoft Teams and Office updates. So with these updates, we're not going to constrain ourselves just to Microsoft Teams. We're going to dig into the Office stack. And for all of you folks um, that work with Microsoft 365 and Office, you realize, you know, you, you know very, um, very much how how there are so many connections between the different products. So we're going to kind of talk through just higher level updates on the products. Then um, in our next session of the presentation, we're gonna dive deeper. So we're gonna first gonna talk about Operator Connect Mobile, which is our fixed mobile convergence solution for Microsoft Teams. Um, then we're gonna, we're gonna talk about Dynamic E911, and Dwayne does a really great job of talking through the specifics and the guts of how we do location detection in Teams phone, um, for the purposes of properly routing uh, a nine, an emergency call and then providing location information to the uh, public safety access point. Finally, we're going to talk through some of the innovation in devices with the return to office that there, we get a lot of questions these days around devices. And then finally, some suggested next steps. Before we do so, though, I'm going to show a very quick video. Uh, teams just had its fifth anniversary. It's been out in the wild for five years. And so this is just a, a nice little marketing video that that uh, was put out to celebrate that milestone and uh, underscores a, the the uh, really huge change that we've seen in the workplace in the last five years. So without further ado.
All right. So I'd like to uh, talk a bit about the workplace trends that are impacting um, all of our workplace workplaces and how that's driving the product innovation um, that we see with Microsoft 365 and with Teams and Teams Phone specifically. So let's talk a little bit about the Work Trend Index. And the Work Trend Index is um, uh, some research so that we've done. And we've surveyed about 31,000 people in 31 countries just to really understand that all of the fundamental changes about work, expectations, our attitudes about work, how all of that has shifted so fundamentally with the pandemic. Um, what we have seen is that people have reevaluated and reprioritized what's important to them um, and how they look at the role of work in their lives. And so again, the Work Trend Index is just um, our, um, it, our annual survey of what are the priorities and attitudes and expectations around work. So, so what did the most recent Work Trend Index tell us? So first it told us that space matters. Leaders say, 54% of leaders say that their, their companies are investing in technologies and space, space is, to redesign their meeting rooms to make them more hybrid friendly. So we see the emergence of meetings where some uh, hybrid meetings where some uh, attendees are remote and are working from home. Um, but at, with the return to office, we see uh, meetings where those in those same meetings, some attendees are going to be in the physical office space many times with technology and um, and layouts that were designed before the pandemic. So we see that leaders and companies are saying that that needs to change. We need to redesign those spaces. Next, 53% of workers are more likely to prioritize their health and well being at work versus two years ago before the pandemic. So we see an increased focus on well being. Again, with the pandemic putting into sharp focus, um, just how um, uh, just how, uh, um, you know, just just putting a focus on our well-being. Finally, 51% of workers say that they're likely to go remote in the year ahead. Um, and again, this is something that is, um, what we saw with the pandemic was a proof point of how at scale, when people were forced to work remotely, um, the the cloud computing and internet access performed um, uh, as well as we could have possibly imagined it. So now employers and employees alike know that there is um, this other alternative where remote work is is not only is it possible, but people um, can in in many cases be more productive and prefer to work remote. So on this slide, we just have a few links um, that are handy if you want to dig further into these, uh, the Work Trend Index and these trends that we just discussed. The first is uh, Work Lab, and that's at Microsoft.com slash Work Lab. And then secondly, we have published some quick start guides around hybrid work. So in being informed from the, from the findings of the Work Trend Index report, um, We've prepared some some guides so that leaders, as they're thinking about how to prepare their organization for this new normal and the the hybrid workplace that is um, emerging, this provides some best practices and some tips and tricks to how to think about this new space that we sit in. So I'd like to shift gears a little bit and talk about some Microsoft Teams and Office updates. These are going to be broader product updates 
that are um, that span across Microsoft Teams and across Microsoft 365 all up. So as we look at these the 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 value pillars that we're investing in, the first is that leaders need to make our trips or our or our um, trips to the physical office space. They need to be worth the commute because again, we've learned that um, people can work just fine and be very productive uh, at home. And so if I'm going to go into the office, my expectations are greater for what the for what that office experience is going to provide. So in that space, first we have something called RS, Outlook RSVP. What that provides is the ability to um, via Outlook, an additional option to um, not only be to accept or decline a meeting, but to also indicate whether you're going to be joining a meeting physically or virtually. Next, and I would think this is a this is a huge area of investment, is something called the front row layout with Teams rooms. And this is really a um, a specific layout of the Microsoft Teams rooms. The Teams rooms, for for those who are not familiar, is the the Microsoft native um, conference room technology. So we have Teams rooms for various spaces. And we certify these Teams rooms systems for huddle rooms, for small conference rooms, medium conference rooms, large conference rooms, et cetera. Now, the front row layout provides in increased options for engaging in um, for engagement within a hybrid meeting context. So what does that mean specifically? It means things like um, raised hands and meeting chat are, are prominent in the in the display so that we usher in this era of meeting equity where you whether you're in the conference room or whether you're you're remotely joining the meeting you're all on the same plane and have access to equally engage in the meeting we also have several de companion device experiences that allow you to use your mobile device in as a companion um, when you're doing things like joining a Teams meeting. So um, the companion device experiences would allow things like um, you to walk into a meeting being hosted in a Teams room and to use your iPhone as a remote for that meeting. We also have things like the Surface Hub camera, which uh, incorporates new um, AI technology to um, better represent participants within a shared space. Finally, we have third party ide ideation board devices to sit alongside our first party Surface Hub offering. So we have boards coming out from both Yealink and Neat that provide um, additional options for collaboration in real time um, uh, using Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Whiteboard. So the second value pillar is around work flexibility does not equate to being at work 24 seven. And so how do we how do we um, make that real in terms of our products? The first area of investment is something called Cameo. And the idea with Cameo is it allows you to incorporate your webcam into um, a PowerPoint presentation. So um, you can, in new ways, um, uh, bridge that gap and and provide a more engaging meeting um, in a new way. So it allows a, another level of engagement with PowerPoint. In a similar way, we've invested in PowerPoint Recording Studio. So this comes in handy in a scenario where you might want to um, record a presentation ahead of time so that an audience could consume it on demand on their own time. Speaker Coach um, started off in Microsoft PowerPoint and is now uh, coming to Microsoft Teams, and, and it provides some, some uh, helpful constructive feedback on how to better 
articulate the messages that you're trying to articulate in a meeting. So, for example, if you say repetitive words like um or yeah, it will let you know that and provide that constructive feedback to you privately so that you can improve. Language interpretation allows us to broaden the audiences for our meetings by uh, providing a, a, a speaker in one language to have their message received by folks that don't speak the same language. Finally, we've really doubled down literally on our whiteboard service. So there have been lots of whiteboard enhancements um, designed to make whiteboard a first class citizen in the Microsoft 365 services. Our final pillar here is rebuild the rebuilding of social capital um, so that, that it looks quite different in this hybrid world. So we've got new ways to communicate and collaborate. Um, and we will talk through these in, in a little bit more depth um, in, in future slides, but we have things like the loop components in Outlook and loop components provide native real-time uh, collaboration and co-authoring. Fluent emojis, Operator Connect Mobile, which is again our fixed mobile convergence solution, which Duane will talk through in some depth later. Teams Connect, which allows us to extend the Teams, um, a Teams channel across organizational boundaries, but without requiring tenant switching. And then finally, the Inspiration Library from Viva Insights, which provides um, a lot of ways to, um, to glean additional content um, around well-being and um, health and wellness. So I'm going to just go quickly over here um, uh, on some of these product slides. I will I will dive deeper than in others. I'm going to skip over the Operator Connect mobile slide, given that we're going to talk through it in a lot of depth. Again, it's our fixed mobile convergence solution, allowing you to um, to basically uh, bridge your work phone and um, and your uh, mobile device. Teams Connect again allows you to collaborate across organizational boundaries without requiring uh, the switching between tenants and um, guest accounts within the tenants. So it's it's a streamlined version of cross tenant collaboration. Front row, as we talked about a bit is really all around the idea of um, meeting equity and having um, increased level of engagement, whether you're in a conference room or a shared space that's, that is um, using a Teams room or you're working from home. So it's a really um, fundamental rethink of, of what the layout should look like with a, with, within a conference room for meetings. Around um, the reimagining of the office experience, you see here some screenshots that reflect um, the office RSVP. So again, the ability to reflect your location um, as you're going to be attending a meeting virtually or physically. Some companion device, exper some companion device experiences. And again, that will involve things like um, um, recognizing your mobile phone recognizing that you're in a meeting and allowing you to um, react um, to to content within a meeting. Um, we have this the AI built into the new Surface Hub camera, which um, provides a lot of um, smart AI features like detecting people within a shared space. And then finally, some some ideation board devices um, from our partners like Yealink and Neat. Next, we um, have some screenshots that indicate the the um, meeting features that we talked about um, on on making meetings matter more more um, things like the uh, cameo for PowerPoint, which allows you to embed your webcam feed into a PowerPoint presentation. The speaker coach, which provides constructive feedback during a presentation privately. Language interpretation for bridging language boundaries for a broad audience, PowerPoint recording studio for allowing for easy recording of content and presentations for consumption on demand. And then finally, 
fundamental whiteboard enhancements and investments, um, making it a first class citizen within Microsoft 365. Finally, in the area of collaboration and communication, we have our loop components um, making its way from Teams to also be joined in Outlook. Uh, loop components, if, you're, if you haven't seen that yet, is does provide the native real-time co uh, collaboration and co-authoring. Uh, fluent emojis, uh, building upon our library of, of um, the fluent UI design and providing um, a rich way to uh, express sentiment. And then finally, Viva Insights, an inspiration library that allows you um, to get access to lots of well-being uh, content on demand. So with that, I'd like to transition to Dwayne, and Dwayne's going to dive deep into the guts of Operator Connect Mobile, our fixed mobile conversion convergence solution, as well as um, the way that we handle dynamic E911 and calling with Teams. So Dwayne. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. So as Matt said, we're going to talk about Operator Connect, and uh, one of the things um, that we're going to look at here is, it, well, exactly what is that, right? In a nutshell, what we're doing is we are allowing you to take that mobile number and span that across teams for your frontline workers. Um, that's a really giant mouthful, mouthful of saying what we did was we took Operator Connect here and we just expounded on that, right, to unlock that power of the mobile, the mobile phone, right? So if you have, um, like a lot of organizations that we deal with, they will have mobile phones assigned to sales users, right, field engineers, that type of thing. Um, you'll be able to assign that single number to them, and they'll be able to use that across not just the mobile device, but across Teams itself, right? Um, you know, there's some cost savings here, right, for these redundant services, right? Um, this truly is mobile integration, right? And it's it's calling that works, right? That's That's what they all want. That's what everybody on the front line really wants, you know, is the ability to pick up the phone and have it make that call, right? No matter where we are. Um, power of Teams, right? So you can take that mobile device and you can actually use the native dialer and in terms of uplift, right? You can push that call into Teams for greater collaboration, right? And and what would you do that for? Well, you can, you can push that into Teams and then conference in someone else, right? And pull someone else, share the screen, um, you know, share the video, right? Um, all of these things are possible. Um, unified integration, collaboration, you know, this is a wonderful tool for all business communications, right? Um, and on top of that, you still get to keep all that mobile security, right? All that compliance across those mobile devices. So this is a great, great thing coming out. Um, again, these are the V1 features. Right, so obviously make and receive a call, um, moving between devices, right? Combined call history for these things. Um, a big one is presence integration, um, unified voicemail, right? Um, showing your mobile number or your company's main number. That's a big one if you're doing outbound callback, right, to a customer. I may not want Matt to know what my mobile device number is. <laughs> I may want him to have to call the switchboard and ask for Dwayne, right? <laughs> um, so there's a a ton, ton going on with Operator Connect, right? Um, preview started in Q3. Um, the initial GA um, is going to be is H2, right? Um, five operators in that initial wave, right? Uh, we have not added additional. We are working to expand that. Um, there are some licensing requirements, right? Phone standard E5, mobile connect operator add-on SKU. Um, so there's, you know, there's some investigation you're going to want to do before you start to enable that. 
Um, and this is kind of at a high level what the user experience is going to look like. Um, the company provided mobile number is basically going to be the same as their device or their SIM, right? And it's provisioned as a team's ID, right? Um, you're going to see the native dialer on here. So it's that single wireless phone number used with a mobile phone, right? And the system number um, and the mobile app, right? Or on the team's desktop client. So it'll span across, right? And again, here you'll see the native dialer, right? We can switch it over to the Teams app. Whoop, let's go back here. So we can switch it over to the Teams app, right? And you'll see the Teams mobile app and the call was moved, right? So that's where we did an uplift. There we go. And easily routing that call, right? so that we can pull in another person, or in this case, we're transferring, right, within the Teams mobile app. And we can, and as I said, this is how we were, you know, I was jokingly talking about not giving Matt my phone number. <laughs> uh, so I can call the customer um, and I can set it up so that they'll just see the corporate number, right? rather than my mobile number, which, you know, is useful, right? Um, unified presence, we talked a little about that, um, but again, that reflects across the device, the desktop, all of it. Um, call history on the native dollar and call history in Teams, identical. Integrated voicemail, Right, kind of a no brainer there. Um, this is more of a what's next. So what are we, where, what are we looking at doing, right? Where are we gonna go with this? Uh, BYOD, that is a big one for a lot of customers, right? Uh, the 5G, right? The mobile enhanced mobile capabilities, right? The IoT, right? Uh, messaging, integration with teams and the native device messaging. And, and multiple identities or multiple numbers in Teams. And these are all on the drawing board, right? Um, we do not have dates around them yet. Um, let's kind of move into E911 because E911, because this is an extremely sensitive and timely concept for most of our customers. Um, here's sort of a high level agenda. We're gonna talk a little bit about the laws, the calling considerations, right? And then we're gonna to touch at a kind of a high level, how we do emergency calling in teams, right? Um, as most of you know, Kerry's Law and Ray Baum's Act here in the US, um, federal law that totally changed 911 requirements for any organization like yours. Um, it ultimately is gonna affect how you purchase, install, manage all of that, right? Um, and you'll see this big disclaimer I've got down here. And if I could put this in flashing neon at the top of every slide in this conversation, I would. Um, and the reason I would is because this is a legal issue. And you as a network engineer or an architect or, you know, whatever your role happens to be, um, you have to have some type of legal sign off. Okay, so I'll get off my soapbox on that. Um, is there any organizational policy that you have in place currently, right? Um, you know, for people who work from home or people who are remote or outside of the US, right? Or outside of designated, designated facilities. I know Microsoft does that. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. There is no Microsoft facility here in Jacksonville, Florida. The nearest one for me is in Atlanta. So Carrie's law um, applies to phone systems, right? Uh, manufactured, imported, offered for sale, um, first sold or leased. <laughs> I love their legal jargon. Bottom line is February 16th, 2020, right? Um, that's the magic number, right? And so you must have no prefix option. What does that mean? Years ago, if you were in the telephone business, you knew that you had to dial nine to get an outside line. According to Kerry's law, 
you can no longer enforce that. You have to have a direct dial for emergency calling. Um, additionally, on-site notifications when a 911 call is made must be sent. On-site personnel, right? Again, these are all things you are going to want to consult with your legal department on. Um, Ray Bombs Act, right? Uh, we had a little grace period in there, went up to January 6, 2021, when we started talking about this for on-premise fixed devices, right? Um, these dates have passed, so we need to be compliant, right? Again, this is the discussion for you and your legal department. Microsoft can show you how to do it, right? Um, but that is a legal requirement, and you will want to discuss that with them. Um, outside of the U.S., how's 911 handled? Emergency calls in Canada, Ireland, and the U.K., they're screened first to determine the current location of the user, right? Um, France, Germany, Spain, they're routed directly to a PSAP. And that PSAP is whichever one is servicing, you know, or associated with the number, regardless of the location of the caller. That's important. Um, Netherlands, emergency calls routed directly to the PSAP for local area code of the number. Uh, Australia, emergency addresses are configured and routed by carrier partner. And Japan, it's not supported. So different laws outside the US, inside the US, you need to make sure that you've had legal discussions and that you are actually compliant. Um, let's move into a little more how to. Uh, Microsoft Teams 911 dynamic locations. Um, here's some of the basics, okay? How does this, what happens? 911 gets called, um, emergency call provider, right? Or the PSAP, right, is where that goes. Uh, Teams clients are location aware. So on startup, that client is going to go out and see if there's a network status change and the client queries, right, the Teams LIS or location information service, right, to find out where Duane is. Now, the configuration of that location information service or that list database, yeah, that's you, you as a customer, that is your responsibility, right? Um, that list database returns a dispatchable location data to the client, right? And so it's embedded in that SIP signal and emergency calls pass that information using what's called PID flow, right? So you can see here, list returns that information back to the team's client and then that information gets passed through when the emergency call is made. What is the client experience? Currently, if you see here, I know this is difficult to see on the slide and I apologize for that, uh, but really what we've done here is we've kind of expanded this out here, right? And so this is going to use uh, the location of my device Right, and it's going to go out and it's going to query and see where it is, right? And then it's going to feed that information back in. I can manually edit this. That can be configured to have the end user manually edit this, right? Um, and then you'll see here if you go into settings and calls underneath there, you should see an emergency location. Here are some of the configuration elements for dynamic calling. Um, emergency addresses and places, network identifiers, notification targets, and teams policies. Right? All of those are elements that you need to look at. So emergency addresses. Right? Can't assign a phone number without an emergency address associated. Topology. Right? How are we going to do this? Are we going to go to the switch level? Are we going to go down to, you know, the building? Are we going to go to the uh, the subnet? Or are we going to go to the port? We can actually go down to the port. Um, 
each of those poses its own separate challenge, but we can guide you through those. Um, and you'll see here network locations, right? And I know this is difficult to read, but what we've highlighted here is ports. Location awareness. Now this is uh, the client diagnostic log. And you'll see here that it actually is location aware. US Brookfield is what it shows the address and it gives the subnet range. Uh, emergency calling policies, right? So who do we want to notify? We can notify a group, we can notify an individual, um, but according to the law, a notification has to be done to that on-premise, right? Um, and this, you know, who do you notify in your organization? Most organizations, they have a group that handles this. They have a group that gets notified if there's an emergency call, it pops the information that it's gotten through the pit flow, and then those people will be there to guide emergency services once they get to the location if needed. Um, call routing policies, right? So again, we're looking at Brookfield, right? And we've said 911, right? So we are forcing that where we want that to go. Uh, this is just a slide highlighting what is PID flow, right? Which is that presence information data format location object. Ooh, mouth flow. That's why we call it PID flow. Uh, but you actually, there is a screenshot here which will show you how PID flow is passed through that SIP, right? Um, it's actually in an XML schema. Um, emergency calling providers. Right, um, verified system border controllers. There is a link here, which will show you what session border controllers we've verified. Um, and then on top of that, what are the 911 service providers? Right, uh, some of these, you know, the ERS, the Entrato Emergency Routing Service, and the and the EGW. Uh, if you've ever worked with those, those are two of the big ones that I personally have done some work with. Um, Again, there is a link here you'll be able to follow. You can go through and you can reach out and, and see if yours is on here. Um, call routing location precedence. Why is this important, right? It's important because this is where we're gonna tell the PSAP, right? And in what order we're gonna tell them. So a dynamically acquired address that's been defined by the tenant admin in the location information service. So if Matt is the admin and he goes in and puts in Dwayne's manually puts in Dwayne's address, right? Then that's the first place it's gonna look, right? Second place, address of an end user confirmed, which means I logged into Teams, I went, I confirmed my address. You know, maybe they were one house number off, maybe it had an incorrect zip code, maybe it was all okay. I just hit verify. An address automatically suggested by the OS. This is important. Location services on the device, right? Um, an address the admin statically assigns to the user. So that's the order of precedence that we're gonna use, right? And this is how they're classified and how they're routed. So a dynamically acquired emergency address defined by an admin goes direct to the PSAP, right? Emergency address obtained from the OS without confirmation, that's important, by the end user is gonna get screened and then transferred. Now an emergency address from the OS with confirmation, which means I looked at it, I checked the box and said, yep, that's where I'm sitting, right next door to Matt it'll go direct to the PSAP. So an emergency address from the operating system and edited and confirmed by the user, again, screened, transferred, right? And the rest of these are screened and transferred. So what does that client experience look like? It, this is an actual screenshot. This is what it looks like, right? You get a big red triangle up there, um, an emergency call is being made, 
right? Um, if you look, there is an entire article on here supporting these requirements. Um, this link here from December uh, is your best bet. If you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to your modern communication CSM. If you don't know who that is, reach out to me, reach out to Matt. Um, we will we will get you set up. Um, so again, in this, this is kind of a mock-up, right? But you can see here, it couldn't detect the location. Why not? Well, maybe, maybe you know, my location on my OS is off. Maybe, right? Um, I can put in and confirm my address, and then that'll verify it, right? Um, these are some of the clients that are currently supported. Um, again, there's a link in here because, you know, obviously this is going to change, right? Um, it will mutate. Um, but your, all your Windows desktop clients, your Apple OSs, and then we break down into some specifics around uh, rooms and phone. And those, when it talks about phone, those are physical phones, right? Mobile clients. Um, pretty much, I think everybody, unless you have absolutely said you'll never update, you should be on the latest version if you're pulling those out of the Play Store for your mobile devices. So, uh, some of the client limitations. Uh, Third-party IP phones are 3-PIP, not support dynamic emergency calling. And I put references in here. Um, SIP gateway only supports static, also called registered, right? Emergency addresses, right? Again, put some references in here. VDI, um, enhanced emergency services not supported. So those are limitations to be aware of. And I think that is the last one. Perfect, thanks, Duane. Thank you, sir. I will um, talk a bit about devices. So as we think about the device, the spectrum of devices with um, in use with Microsoft Teams, um, we, we classify um, things according to personal works, workspaces and shared workspaces. So in the realm of personal workspaces are things like individual offices, um, devices that are in use while you're on the go or in your commute or if you're in your home office or or just simply at home. Um, in the shared workspaces, we have things like um, your traditional conference rooms or meeting rooms. We also have seen a lot of um, huddle huddle rooms in use and focus rooms increasingly, um, as well as touchdown spaces or hoteling spaces. For personal workspaces, we have a, a spectrum of personal devices. These are things like USB connected peripherals or, or uh, uh, increasingly Bluetooth connected peripherals. Um, also webcams, personal speaker phones, um, mobile devices as well. So both Android and uh, iOS devices running the Teams app, as well as traditional IP phones. Um, Connected traditionally via uh, power power via power over Ethernet and could connected via an Ethernet cable or um, with our newer class of of native Teams devices even being connected over Wi-Fi. In the realm of our shared workspaces, we have all-in-one collaboration devices. The best known of these is um, traditionally the Surface Hub, um, but again, we do have some new devices that are coming to market from our partners such as Neat and Yealink, um, providing some of these uh, similar all-in-one collaboration devices. And then in the area of room systems, we call these Teams rooms these days, and they can run either Windows or Android um, and are certified for um, different spaces. So we have a huddle room spec, we have a small, small uh, a conference room spec, we have a medium conference room spec, etc. And then finally, large screen displays. So our core principles are that 
we should preserve the same experience regardless of the device. So we want to have um, a consistent experience um, whether we're uh, whether we are connecting and using Teams with a personal device in our home office or if we've hopped into um, a meeting room with a Teams room system. We should sit, have a click to join experience. Um, we should um, have quick, easy access to things like muting our microphone. Um, inclusion is a key design principle as well. So we want to make sure that whether you're joining from on the go or you're joining remotely or you're in the conference room, you have an equal seat at the table, an equal footing for collaboration and engagement. Certification is really big to us, and so we want to take the guesswork out of the process. So we certify hardware um, and run it through a battery of tests designed for and certified for a particular space in the case of our shared devices. And then and with our personal devices, we run them through a similar battery of tests for things like um, the um, noise cancellation, microphone um, signals to, signals to noise ratio, et cetera. Really at the end of the day, just ensuring that predictable quality experience. And then finally, we want to make sure that we have a reliable, manageable, and an up-to-date system. So whether that's um, that's firmware that's, that is certified and deployed for our IP phones via the Teams Admin Center, or that is um, Teams Rooms that are supported by our customers via the Teams Room Standard SKU, or supported by Microsoft in the case of the Teams Room Premium SKU, we have a, a big focus on making sure that reliability, manageability, um, and software updates are, are uh, constantly being uh, managed. So the best place to go to see what is the best devices for your organization is the office.com Teams Devices site. This provides a comprehensive listing and approximate MSRP pricing on um, various devices across our personal devices and shared devices. And they're separated and categorized by their, by their um, category. So we have headsets, we have speaker phones, we have desk phones or IP phones and room systems. This slide just simply shows our, some of our uh, personal devices and what those physical form factors look like. So we have things like the Logitech Brio webcam. We have noise canceling headsets and earbuds. We have traditional um, Bluetooth connected um, uh, headsets. We also have Teams native phones. Um, both for shared spaces like the Crestron UC2 um, and executives like the CCX600, as well as the Polycom, uh, excuse me, as well as the audio codes for C450 HD for information workers. Here you see a lot of our partners in the uh, Teams phone space and in the personal speakerphone and headset space. We also have a new class of devices called the Teams displays. And these are ambient displays that are meant to sit. Um, they, they, they're autonomous. They sit on the network and they, um, they run Android as an operating system and they are designed to sit um, alongside a user um, at, in their home office or in their um, office at work or in a hoteling space or a touchdown space. They provide access to um, a user's calendar, as well as quick uh, ability to join a meeting and participate via video and audio. In our shared devices space, um, sometimes we have confusion around um, what the what the architecture is of our various shared devices. So traditionally, we have a modular architecture for our Teams rooms systems. And these, this modular architecture is supported by Microsoft Teams Rooms on Windows. 
with the emergence of a lot of of um, smaller shared spaces like focus rooms and huddle rooms, we have a newer class of devices that are Teams rooms that that run the Android OS. And typically the the these have a form factor where the audio and video is combined in a single device, something analogous to a, to a sound bar that you might put on, under your uh, HDTV at home. But these um, Teams rooms, these integrated Teams room systems include um, high quality um, video cameras in addition to uh, speakers and microphones. So the, the, the benefit with these systems is a lower price point, simplified device management, um, and really uh, quick and easy deployment. And again, they're certified um, for these particular spaces, so you're assured that you will get proper uh, microphone coverage as well as uh, speaker coverage as well. And then finally, we have these all-in-one devices. These again would traditionally, we would look to the first party Surface Hub for, and it's still a wonderful solution. Um, but now for shared devices, we are gonna have a couple additional devices from our partners, Neat and Yealink um, for uh, ideation devices that provide audio, video, and um, collaboration in one unit. So this slide talks through um, in, in a bit more detail um, what our modular device um, uh, spectrum of devices looks like. So the focus is on Teams meetings with advanced audio and video requirements. So typically for larger spaces, or more customized spaces where we need to, to design a solution explicitly um, to fit a larger or more customized space. That modular architecture provides us that flexibility. So we have a range of different screen sizes. We support um, single displays, but also dual displays, front of room, and in a dual, dual display uh, configuration, we'll typically um, place the content, shared content on one display, and a video gallery on the other. Um, the operating system, and again, the platform here is Teams Rooms on Windows. For these integrated devices, again, we these are kind of designed explicitly for the huddle room or focus rooms. Um, everything is integrated together, so there is limited flexibility, but, um, but with these this integrated design we have simplified deployment and they're a great fit for smaller spaces like a huddle room and our focus room they run again the android operating system and they run the team the version of the teams app specific for teams rooms on android all in one devices again traditionally this was the surface hub um, but the neat board is joining um, the fray as well as an offering from Yealink. And these uh, devices are designed to provide a collaboration first experience for um, uh, digital whiteboarding in addition to video conferencing. And finally, we just have uh, a light, I really like this slide because it shows the spectrum of options across the different spaces that are in use in your organization. So things like an executive office, focus room, all the way up to large conference rooms, the, the um, capacity of those rooms, the dimensions, and the various solutions, uh, Teams rooms uh, solutions, and uh, device solutions that fit these different spaces. So one thing that that we see as very being very important is certain times when you're in a in a migration toward Microsoft Teams, you might require you might have some uh, some legacy hardware that um, needs to be traded in in order to replace those devices with native Teams devices. So to to try to assist our customers and support our customers in that process, 
we have a device trade-in program. So here's the link for that device trade-in program. And the way it works is you go to the website itself and you just submit a request for a quote by providing the quantity and the type of devices that you'd like to trade in. You get a an estimate of what um, what you would be reimbursed or what your organization would be reimbursed. Um, and then you can um, go about the process of procuring native devices for Microsoft Teams and um, be rest assured that you're not um, um, that you're getting all the mileage and the value out of those devices that you own today. So we're just about at the end of our presentation. What I'd like to do is suggest a next step if you or your organization is just beginning to look at Microsoft Teams for um, either advanced meeting scenarios or for Microsoft Teams phone. We have a set of workshops for Teams phone. We call it the Microsoft Modernized Communications Workshop for Advanced meeting scenarios, we have a similar workshop called the hybrid meetings workshop. And these are Microsoft funded workshops that um, they're, plan they're very in-depth planning workshops. They uh, take place over the course of a, a, a business day or up to a, a day and a half. And the idea is to get all the various stakeholders from your organization together and, and go through um, a um, a session led by a subject matter expert in Microsoft Teams phone and or Microsoft Teams rooms to go through um, the art of the possible and then um, a discovery session on how your organization could move forward um, with moving either to Teams phone or to Teams rooms. And so at the end of that workshop, you would get a document that would be the roadmap or the blueprint for moving forward with a proof of concept or pilot. Again, it's a no cost offering to our enterprise customers. And um, it is a great way to get started um, and build a plan to move to Teams. So with that, I'd like to um, simply just thank you for your time today um, on behalf of both myself and Dwayne. Um, we really appreciate your time. And as Dwayne mentioned earlier, if you have any questions or a, uh, or a desire to follow up, you um, can please feel free to reach out to your modern communications CSM. If you don't know who that is or that name or that role doesn't mean anything to you, you can feel free to reach out to either myself or Dwayne. Um, we're both uh, accessible on LinkedIn and we would gladly connect you with your modern modernized, excuse me, your modern communications CSM. Thanks again and have a great day.